So we got some pretty amazing news for you guys, including the Outriders potentially going towards a Diablo-like monetization. A steampunk MMORPG may potentially be going into beta testing this summer. Lord of the Rings Online may be getting a new class in almost five years. You can now pick different classes in Valheim. And we have more leaks for all you Genshin Impact fans out there. Hello everyone, my name is Solomon SK for Coffee and RPGs, where we cover the latest news, trends, and updates for the RPG gaming genre, including MMOs, GRPG survival, online and the like if you guys got your cut ready with your beverage of choice i'm drinking coffee as always let's go ahead and go over these articles together cheers to you guys consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification right next to it thank you all right everyone so let's go ahead and get started with our feature article for today's video and I do have to apologize that the thumbnail will be a little bit clickbaity, and uh, I'll just get to it. That's because this game, the game called Noah's Heart here, is a mobile-only platform game. And to a lot of you, maybe that's not a big deal, but to me, uh, it's... Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. If you guys have been watching this channel for a while, you guys know that... I don't really consider a lot of these MMORPGs on the mobile platform actual MMOs. The word massively in the word MMO seems to be a little lacking in a lot of these titles. When I think of MMORPGs, I think of games like Final Fantasy XIV, World of Warcraft, Black Desert Online. And that's not to say that there aren't any MMORPGs for the mobile platform. The two that comes to mind would actually be Black Desert Mobile and V4 or Victory 4 as I think some people call it as well. Granted, you're still not going to see thousands of people that you stereotypically do in normal MMORPGs, but at least they have a persistent world where you actually see other people and interact with them and talk with them and stuff like that. But yeah, I think one of the games that uh, is mistakenly being labeled as an MMORPG would be Raid Shadow Legends. Yes, it's an RPG, but is it an MMO? I would really beg to differ, but at least that's my opinion of it anyways. I'm sorry, I've been ranting off about this whole definition of MMOs and I haven't even talked about the game yet, so I do apologize. But this does come from MassivelyOP.com and it says in the title there that steampunk MMO Noah's Heart aims for a summer 2021 beta testing, but definitely take a grain of salt with this one because I do believe it's not really been 100% uh, officially confirmed, but it does go on to read that this is a steampunk mobile MMO being developed by Arcosaur Games which is known for a ton of MMOs including Jade Dynasty and Swordsman Online. And according to the YouTuber MMOPH, Noah's Heart aims to start a beta testing this summer with a recruitment opening on June 27th and the first test in July, possibly in China first. So if I'm not into mobile gaming for the most part, why even bring this up? Well, it's a steampunk game at the end of the day and we really don't have a whole lot of really good steampunk games, much less a steampunk online game or a much, much less a steampunk MMORPG. I was really hoping that Elyon Online would have been that for us, a steampunk MMORPG, but uh, some of the developers from what I can remember from Terra Online started to develop the game and now it just kind of looks like Terra more or less without the Ellens. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, just a little disappointed. I mean, not a little, a lot disappointed actually, that they kind of went away from that steampunk aesthetics and the look and feel of the game. But uh, will I give it a try? Absolutely. I'll still give it a go to, and maybe I'll really enjoy it. Who knows? But at the end of the day, yeah, we really don't have a whole lot of options as steampunk fans out there. So if there's anything else you guys would like to add, definitely check out the comment section below and type me up a message and let's start a dialogue and see what potential this game might or may not have. And speaking of mobile games, I just wanted to add this one here really quick. And this comes from MMOculture.com and it says here, Counterside, quick look at closed beta phase for southeastern asian server of upcoming gotcha rpg now again i typically won't cover mobile platforms because i'm just not a huge fan of such gotcha mechanics but there are a few i really do enjoy playing and one of them is epic 7. and after watching the trailer for this game i will admit Everything about this game kind of looks and feels like Epic 7, and to me, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, I get it, the gacha mechanics really sucks. It just kind of is what it is. That's why I really don't like playing mobile games, generally speaking. But this one looks pretty cool, and I'm... Uh kind of looking forward to some of the things that they may or may not do in comparison to other gacha games such as Epic 7 as well. So next, let's head on over to MMORPG.com for a few articles. And it says here that Lord of the Rings Online Brawler class leaks thanks to data miners. And here are the details. So as I said earlier, this game has not had a new class since 2014, but 
It could be a lot worse. Look at Star Wars The Old Republic. Not as new single class since the game's launch, but anyways. But it does go on to read that the Brawler class is coming to Lord of the Rings Online later this year, with the last official news from the MMO's developer, Standing Stone Games, seemingly putting it to release before the upcoming Gunabad expansion, which was delayed into fall of 2021. Now, as for the Brawler class itself, you could kind of get an idea of how it will play in terms of the skills and the descriptions of those skills. There is a video link to their webpage that you could check out if this is something that you're interested in. And in their next article, it says that Final Fantasy XIV has hit 22 million registered users releases new trailer for the upcoming 5.5 Death Unto Dawn update. And as always, I do have the trailer playing right now, and if you want to check out the full trailer, definitely check out the comment section below for a link to that. Now, the upcoming 5.5 update will be released on April 13th, but as far as I can tell, I don't think they're really doing any kind of celebratory actions or events for the 22 million registered users. Now, this next part might go without saying, but I'll say it anyways just in case. All the updates here on out is in preparation for their next big expansion coming out later this year called Endwalker and uh, has a lot of people excited. Next, let's go ahead and switch gears and head on over to GameSpew.com and in their first article, it says here that you can now play Valheim in VR. But a few things about this, no, this is not from the official developers of the game. This is actually a user created mod. And secondly, you also need to have a Steam compatible headset. And within the VR community, that really upsets a lot of people because in order to access and utilize the hardware you actually do need a facebook account but if you don't want one because of whatever security concerns you have well uh tough luck i guess and just really quick in their next article it says that cloudpunk is getting a new sequel sized downloadable content and i think this is really cool if you haven't played cloudpunk i highly recommend it the style is very similar to what you see in Minecraft, but set in a cyberpunk world, which is really cool. And you play as this delivery driver and you, yeah, it's just really a fantastic looking game. Highly recommend this one. And in their next article, it says that next gen version of the Elder Scrolls Online arrives this June. And this is specifically for all the people who play Elder Scrolls Online on the consoles and the lucky few who actually do own a PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series S or X, you will get an upgraded version on June. June 8th and in this version it will have faster loading times as well as the choice of being able to play in 60 frames per second or an optional 30 frames per second in 4k mode as well. Next let's go ahead and head on over to gamesradar.com and in their first article it says that Outriders devs considering big expansion packs but want to avoid game as a service monetization. And that last part is something that I really do enjoy hearing because we all know that looter shooters tend to have the most shadiest monetization practices. Um, yeah, I don't know. They don't have a really good track record, but I know a lot of games have been trying to go away from that. And I think the other looter shooter or slasher shooter in this case would be Godfall. And they've been trying to distance themselves from that sort of uh, weird uh, looter shooter monetization as well. So in this article, they were actually able to interview the creative director for Outriders. And I do apologize, I'm gonna mispronounce his name. I believe it's Kamita. But towards the bottom of the article, it does say, as him quoting, let's take, for example, the major game we took inspiration from, which is Diablo, he continued. Diablo wasn't a game as a service. They just released big expansion packs. They were doing it in a different style. Maybe we'll go that way or do some other things, but for sure, we will not abandon the game if players like it. Another game that actually comes to mind that also did a very similar monetization is actually uh, the original Guild Wars game. Next, let's go ahead and switch gears one more time and head on over to Gematsu.com. And really quick, I just wanted to mention that if you are looking forward to this year's E3, it's digital again this year because of the current crisis that we are going through that you guys already know. And yes, it will be set for June 12th through the 15th. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this just because I know I'll be able to provide a lot of content for you guys from all the vast information and the various games that are be that will be coming out. So uh, definitely set your calendars for this one. Now, in terms of the most anticipated games that I'm looking forward to the most personally, Caligula Effect 2 is probably top 10, if not top five. And in their next article, it says that Caligula Effect 2's second official live stream is set for April 9th. 9th. And it does go on to say that you could actually watch the stream, which is again on April 9th at 10 p.m. Japanese Standard Time. I didn't look up what time zone that is for us, but uh, you could you could Google it as they say. <laughs> 
I hate that phrase so much. But yeah, definitely head on over to their official YouTube page in order to view this second official live stream as well. And it does go on to say that the broadcast will include an overview of announced information as well as live battle and scenario gameplay and more, including details on the items included with the limited edition. Oh man, that is tempting, but I don't think I could pull this one off. It just sounds way too expensive. Next, let's head on over to altchart.com. And I do apologize that the title will be cut off on the right there if you're watching this on a VOD. And it does go on to say in their first article that Genshin Impact 1.5 leaks players can buy transient resin with realm currency and it does go on to read that a recent leak from a credible genshin impact leaker revealed an upcoming item called transient resin which will allow players to replenish 60 additional resin so apparently there is a huge problem with regards to end game content once you've done everything and gathered all the chests and whatnot you could actually go ahead and do instance content to farm your desired materials but this would not be such a huge problem if the game didn't include a a resin system which has a daily cap of 160 but this transient resin is something that players will be able to buy with their realm currency which is a new in-game currency related to the new housing system and so you have the tweet there if you want to take a closer look for yourself but uh, at the end of the day i have so much to catch up on in this game there just isn't enough hours in a day uh anyways and in their next article we do have more leaks but this time it's for elden ring so obviously take everything with a grain of salt but the title does go on to say that elden ring could feature tendency mechanic swimming and hunting and more now i'm not going to go over this article a whole lot and just to give you an idea of what to expect these leaks were actually posted on 4chan so you know take that for what you will but the article itself actually does list some of the potential things that might come to this game but the one that actually caught my eye is here towards the bottom and it says that the world has a set level design but there are some entrances that lead to procedurally generated ruins caves etc now procedurally generated levels isn't something new a lot of games actually have been utilizing this technology if i could call it that probably the most popular one is valheim currently because the worlds created are all procedurally generated but admittedly this is something that i don't really see a whole lot in single player games or single player rpgs so i'm kind of glad that they're doing this it kind of changes things up a little bit and uh, if it's true uh, i guess we'll see how uh, awesome or how bad this could potentially be and in their next article and this is possibly unfortunate for all you guild wars 2 fans out there it says that guild wars 2 pvp balance patch to remove sustain amulets so as of april 6th which is actually today as a recording of this video they will be removing the mender and martial amulets basically they're saying that it provides too much sustainability especially if you are a healer and essentially made support builds way too tanky and extremely efficient at healing at the same time all right let's go ahead and head on over to pcgamer.com for a few articles and it says here in the first article that valheim legends mod adds six character classes including mage druid and ranger and yes uh that first intro part might have been also a little bit clickbaity as well or at least the equivalent of that uh yeah these classes that you can play in valheim is from a mod it's nothing official from the official developers or anything like that so yeah the six classes that this mod adds is the valkyrie the ranger berserker mage druid and the shaman and they pretty much play the way you expect to given the name of these classes from again other stereotypical mmos and rpgs out there so in order to download and play this mod i'd recommend heading on over to nexusmods.com and heading on over to the valheim uh, mod page and yeah i'll give you a ton of information of what it contains some of the requirements permissions and for the funniest article of the week so far it has to go to this article and it says here that this game is about coordinating a raid in an MMO you've never played. And the author of this article purposely left out the name of this game in the title because the name of this game is called My Older Sister Left the Computer So I Got On and Found Myself Trying to Coordinate a Raid in a Game and I Don't Play MMOs. Yes, the entire title of this game is a full sentence. <laughs> And again, the author of this article says that I fired it up and within seconds I have control of 47 fantasy heroes who are all level 70 and yet none of them understands the raid mechanics for the boss fight they are in. He goes on to call it a stress simulator. <laughs> for an MMO. Yeah, definitely brings back some memories. And in their next article, it says that Action RPG Wilson receives 
a huge update and this is going to be specifically for somebody who enjoys playing games like diablo so in update 1.1.1.1 yes that's the name of the update uh, aka the bloodstorm update they've added four new environments playable in the in-game expeditions they've also added new visual effects for various skills in the game as well and of course what update would be complete without a bunch of bug fixes and uh yeah if you guys enjoyed that please consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification icon right next to it that would tremendously help out the channel as i'm still trying to continue to grow it to hopefully get partnered with youtube one of these days i know that was a lot of articles to go over so i will finally let you guys go hope you guys have a blessed night and i will see you guys next time cheers again everyone